with the four wide sweep and Tiago is in behind them and at the top of the stretch a Philly is in front of the Belmont but Curlin is right there with her these two in a battle of the sexes in the Belmont stakes it is Curlin on the inside rags to riches on the outside a desperate finish rags to riches and Curlin they're coming down to the wire it's going to be very close and it's going to be a Philly in the Belmont Rags to Riches has beaten Curlin and a hundred years of Belmont history. The first Philly to win it in over a century. All right, welcome back to my new nine-part series on Racing Rundown. We're going to be taking a look at each of the nine candidates or nine finalists for induction to the Horse Racing Hall of Fame this summer. If any of them are inducted, they would be inducted sometime in August. I'm not entirely sure what the date is. I'll tweet out what the date is when I find out what it is. Last year, the only inductee was Heavenly Prized. Heavenly Prized was a pretty good three-year-old filly in 1994. And she had a decent 1995 season. But she was overshadowed by her incredible stablemate Inside Information's performance in the Breeders' Cup Distaff of 1995. If it's not listed among them, that is definitely one of the most dominant performances in Breeders' Cup history. It might not be in a top 10, but it is definitely extremely dominant. So among the finalists for induction this year are Blind Luck, her most notable victory in 2010 when she won the Eclipse Award for champion three-year-old Philly was the Kentucky Oaks. Gio Ponti, a very good horse that could run on any, any surface. He could run on grass. He could run on dirt. He could run on synthetics. Gio Ponti is one of the better turf horses based in America in the past couple of years. You also have Havre de Grace, 2011 Horse of the Year. That campaign was highlighted by a victory in the Woodward Stakes over older male horses. Also, Rags to Riches, the winner of the 2007 Belmont Stakes and who actually we're going to be covering today, her Hall of Fame case. And then you also have, appearing for the first time, the late Royal Delta, three-time Eclipse Award winner and two-time Breeders' Cup Distaff winner. And then on the human side, 1990 Eclipse Award winner for outstanding jockey Craig Perrette, champion trainers Mark Cassie, Christophe Clement, and John Whiteley. So today we're going to be talking about Rags to Riches and her case for Hall of Fame induction. Rags to Riches was a regally bred filly. She was by AP Indy, who in 2004, when she was foaled, was one of the top sires in the world. She was out of a deputy minister mayor, Better Than Honor. Better Than Honor the year before in 2006 had foaled the Belmont Stakes winner, Jazzle. So Rags to Riches became the second full from Better Than Honor to win the Belmont Stakes. Her campaign herself, Rags to Riches, consists of victories in the Grade 1 Las Virginis, San Anita Oaks, Kentucky Oaks, Belmont Stakes, and a second in the Gazelle Handicap before she was retired because of an injury. Rags to Riches was a winner of 5 of 7, she was only out of the money once in her first career start. Her last race, she was second to Lear's Princess in the Gazelle, and then she was retired, as stated earlier, because of an injury. But Rags to Rich's career is really highlighted by two victories, the Kentucky Oaks and the Belmont Stakes. And the Belmont Stakes even over overshadows the Kentucky Oaks. In the Kentucky Oaks, Rags to Riches was trained by Todd Pletcher and ridden by Garrett Gomez. She beat Octave by about two and a half lengths. And after the Kentucky Oaks, Michael Tabor and the ownership group decided to run her in the Belmont Stakes as opposed to running her in the Preakness or any of the other Philly races at New York. There were a couple that they could have run her in, either the Acorn or the Mother Goose. They passed those up, went to the Belmont Stakes, now, you remember 2007 was the year of the legendary three-horse rivalry of Curlin, Street Sense, and Hardspun. All three were great horses, and you can make the argument that in a year that 
the other two didn't exist, that one horse would have won, if not the Triple Crown, two of the three races. Oh, in the Kentucky Derby, Street Sense had won by two and a half lengths over Hard Spun with Curlin finishing third. Curlin, I think his problem in the Kentucky Derby was he couldn't get through traffic until it was too late to close on Street Sense and Hard Spun. It was Street Sense winning, Hard Spun second, Curlin third. Preakness, you flip that. Curlin this time got through. Street Sense looked like a winner down the stretch. Curlin, for whatever reason, either he found something or Calvin Burrell didn't control Street Sense's speed as well as he could have. Or Street Sense, probably as some horses do, just pulled himself up when he didn't see another horse near him. But for whatever reason, Curlin ran down Street Sense. He won by a head. Hard Spun was third. Street Sense did not run in the Belmont Stakes. The Connections did not see it reasonable to run him in the Belmont and decided to point him for the Travers in August. So that just left Rags to Riches running against Hard Spun and Curlin. Now, Curlin at this point in his career was not the Curlin that he would become. He, I think he really became the racehorse that he is now, or his legacy is, when he beat Lawyer Ron in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. But that's neither here nor there. She was still running against two very good horses. And then there were the Belmont Stakes field, other than that, wasn't terrible. It wasn't Curl and Hardspun, her, and then horses that didn't belong there. C.P. West, Sluice Tizzy, I'm a Wild and Crazy Guy, and Tiago were all nice horses. They just weren't as good as Hardspun and Curlin. Now, Rags to Riches had to overcome a lot of adversity to win the Belmont Stakes. She stumbled at the start of the race. She had to come four wide around those big turns at Ben. The Belmont Park turns are larger than a lot of other racetrack turns. And then not to mention the fact that she was going a mile and a half. And once she got to the stretch, she had to deal with Curlin. So if you ask me, I would put her in the Hall of Fame just for that run against Curlin. The way she just looked Curlin in the eye and did not let him go by her was absolutely amazing. Rags to Riches won the Belmont Stakes in a way that none of the other fillies in recent history that won Triple Crown races won them. All of them were on the lead and had to hold off a late charger. None of them were in an absolute slugfest with another horse. Rags to Riches dealt with Curlin down that entire Belmont Park stretch. So if you want my opinion on Rags to Riches, she is a Hall of Famer. I'm not sure if she's going to get in. I would give her my vote. I hope she gets in because she deserves to be in. She will get in eventually. She may not for another couple of years, but she definitely deserves to get in this year. I ho Again, I hope she gets in, but it's up to the voters. So we got one candidate down, eight to go. Next, I think we're going to cover Royal Delta. And from there, we'll see who we decide to do next. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to Racing Rundown to get more content like this. In addition, Racing Rundown is also a podcast on iTunes and Spotify with new episodes weekly on Tuesdays. In addition, we are also on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow us on Instagram at Racing Rundown and on Twitter at Rundown Racing. Part two of our Examining the Hall of Fame cases for the 2019 finalists, we'll look at Royal Delta's case. Be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss that video. After dawn, they get to the top of the stretch in the Kentucky Oaks. They turn for home in the stretch drive, dreaming of Anna shortly. Mystical plan over Halzer. And here comes on the outside, Rags to Riches. Rags to Riches has kicked it into high gear and accelerates away with authority. Rags to Riches by two now. Octaves back up into second, but it's all Rags to Riches. Much the best here. Rags to Riches and Garrett Gomez gallops home by four legs over Octaves second. High heels third, dawn after. Don was fourth. 